Hello and welcome to this one hour vinyasa flow yoga class building to the peak pose of Hanumanasana, which is the splits pose. And it's named after the monkey god Hanuman, um, and it's a reflection of his striding from India to Sri Lanka in one stride. It's quite a challenging pose if you don't have the natural automatic flexibility in the hips. Um, and as such, it's one that I really like to practice when I'm feeling self-doubt or not sure of my path because it requires such trust and surrender. I would say this is an all levels class, although there are some quite advanced um, hip opening and not a lot of beginner instruction, so you may not want to do this if this is your first time practicing yoga. Thank you and I hope you love it. You're going to begin your practice standing at the front of your mat with your hips over your ankles. Inhale, you're going to raise your arms above your head and take a gentle back bend. Exhale, bring the hands in prayer and forward fold, bending at the waist, come all the way forward, release the head, release the neck. Inhale, look forward, bring your shoulders back, look forward. Exhale, fully fold again. Release your head, release your neck, shake out your hips. Inhale, come all the way up, take a back bend, gentle back bend. Exhale, hands in prayer in front of the chest, mountain pose. Take a moment here to bring your shoulders up to your ears and then release them down. And then inhale, arms rise all the way up. Exhale, forward fold, release the head and the neck, shaking gently. Bend one leg, bend the other leg to open the hips and the backs of the thighs. Inhale, look forward, bring the shoulders back. Exhale, forward fold. Just hang here for a moment. And on an inhale, come all the way back up, arms overhead. And exhale, you're going to come straight down into a chair pose. So imagine your invisible seat arms by your ears, so arms stretching up towards the ceiling, seat coming low, low, low down, weight in the heels, weight in the heels. Keep breathing, breathing deeply into your chest, and then on the next inhale, come to normal standing. Bring your hands in prayer in front of your chest, and then bring some in gentle improvised movement into your hips, so you can sway back and forth, bend one leg, bend the other, just to open the joint very, very gently. And then on an inhale, bring your arms above your head with a little back bend. Exhale, hands in prayer, fold forward, bending at the waist all the way down. Release the head, release the neck. Inhale, look forward, shoulders back. Exhale, step the right foot back, then the left foot into plank. We're gonna hold a plank for a moment. So lift your bum, back is nice and straight. Back of your lungs are filled with air. And on exhale, push back to downward facing dog. Inhale, roll back forward into plank, keeping the butt high, keeping the chest full and buoyant. And then raise your left foot off the floor. Flex into the foot. And then on the exhale, bring it down. And on the inhale, raise the right foot off the floor. Flex the foot and bring it back down. And then on an exhale, knees come to the mat. Inhale to cat, arching the back. Exhale to cow, pushing the floor away with your hands. Inhale to cat. And then exhale, bring your butt to your heels. Separate your knees wide apart and come forward into a child's pose. So your forehead's going to come to the mat. Arms are straight out in front of you, palms relaxed onto the floor. And just like to take some deep, beautiful breaths into your low back. This pose really opens the hips, so breathing into the hips, breathing into anywhere where it feels tight. Re relaxing your shoulders, relax the full length of your arm, relax the back of your neck, and release into the floor. So allow gravity to have you in this pose. You can bring the hands in prayer if you like. One more breath here. And then on an inhale, come back up into all fours. 
Uh, if you want to use blocks here, you can, but you don't have to. It's just uh, to give a little bit more length in the downward dog uh, through the arms. So if you want to use blocks, go for it. We're going to come into downward facing dog for a few breaths here. So the backs of your legs are opening. Your tailbone is pressing towards the sky and you're pushing from your palms all the way up your arms, all the way down your back into the tailbone. So you have really good length all the way from the hands into the tailbone. And then inhale, raise your right leg. Exhale, bring the knee towards the nose and then release the foot to the floor. And then inhale, bring the chest upright. You can lean on the blocks on the long edge if you have them. And we're stretching into the hips here. On your next inhale, bring the arms overhead if it feels okay to go deeper into the hips. Chest is full of breath, so you're breathing all the way up into your collarbones. Maybe take a little stretch to open up the armpits. Back of the neck is long. And then exhale, bring the hands to back to either side of the foot or to the blocks. Bring the right knee to the nose, hold it for a moment, and then step back into plank and through plank to downward facing dog. Breathing here, navel dropping back to the spine. Inhale the left leg up and back. Exhale, left knee to nose, come forward, hover the foot off the floor, and then bring the foot between the hands. Inhale, look forward, bring your shoulders back, starting to bend into that left hip pretty strongly. Chest is open. Inhale comes all the way up to your collarbones. You can bring your arms overhead or cradle the back of your neck, but the back of the neck is long. Taking a nice deep opening in the chest here and in the hips at the same time. Breathing into anywhere that feels super tight or uncomfortable. And then exhale, bring the hands to the floor, raise the left knee to the face, and exhale, extend the left leg behind you, and coming back into your downward facing dog. Couple of breaths here. The shoulder blades are rolling away from each other, the back of the neck is released, and you're pressing through the thumbs and the forefingers all the way up into the tailbone, releasing the heels down. And then on your next exhale, slowly walk towards the front of your mat, come into forward fold. Inhale, look forward, bring the shoulders back. Exhale, release all the way down. And then inhale, arms rise all the way up, little back bend. Exhale, hands in prayer for mountain pose. Inhale, the left arm overhead, right hand comes down the back of the leg for a back bend. And then inhale to come back up, slowly, slowly, keeping the low back long and the left hand comes down to your side. Inhale, the right arm comes up, left hand goes down the back of the left thigh for a back bend. And a standing camel pose here. Inhale to come back up, and exhale, release both hands to either side. Inhale, arms rise, exhale, forward fold, release the head, release the neck. Inhale, look forward, shoulders back. Exhale, step back to plank, through chaturanga, inhale to upward facing dog, exhale downward facing dog. Inhale, raise the right leg up and back, exhale, bring the knee towards the nose, hover the foot for a moment and then step the foot between the hands. Settle your feet. Bring the left heel to the floor, foot at a 45 degree angle, inhale, come all the way up to warrior one. Deep bend in the front leg, Keep your awareness in the outer edge of your left foot, shoulders relaxed, arms raising up towards the sky. And then exhale, hands back to the floor, step it back to plank, chaturanga, inhale, upward facing dog, exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale the left leg this time, up and back. And then exhale, bring the left knee to the nose, bring the foot to hover between the hands and then step it down to the mat. The right foot comes down at a 45 degree angle, inhale up to warrior one. Deep bend in the front leg, come all the way down to 90 degrees with your thigh. Tailbone nice and long. And then exhale, hands back to either side of the foot, step it back to plank, chaturanga, 
Inhale, upward facing dog, shoulders back. Exhale, downward facing dog. Take a rest here, deep breath. Belly releasing towards the spine. Back of the neck released, pressing into the thumb and forefinger to activate the full length of the arms. See if you can push the floor away a little bit more, relaxing the backs of the legs. And then on an exhale, walk forward to a forward fold at the front of your mat. Release the head, release the neck. Inhale, arms rise all the way up to standing. And exhale, samastiti, hands in prayer. Just settle here for a moment. And then inhale, you're going to come into a chair pose. So dropping the hips towards the floor, weight is in your heels, arms rising towards the ceiling, the back is as straight as you possibly can, looking up towards the hands. And then on an inhale, come up onto your tippy toes. So staying in the chair, but rising up onto the balls of the feet. Little challenge here. And then exhale, come to a forward fold. Inhale, look forward, bring your shoulders back. Exhale, step the left and then the right leg back into plank. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. And exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, the right leg up and back. Exhale, step it through. Inhale, come up to warrior one. Back foot at a 45 degree angle. And then open up immediately into warrior two. So the front heel is in line with the middle of the left foot. The front leg is bent at a 90 degree angle. Both of the arms are super active and your gaze is over the middle front finger. Keep your breath super deep. So breathing all the way up into the collarbones and a full exhalation, bringing the belly to the spine. And see if you can embody the grace and poise of the warrior here. Feel that strength and beauty. Feel the back of your neck long, jaw relaxed. Super gorgeous, noble asana. And then on your exhale, bring the right hand to the inside of the right foot. Left arm rises up to the sky. You can rotate it down and around to bring it over your ear. The palm is flat, uh, palm facing towards the floor. And your gaze is on your palm, but the back of your neck is long. Keep that front leg deeply bent. Take a deep breath here. Exhale fully, bringing the navel to the spine. Feel the power in your legs. Feel the strength. One more breath. And then you're gonna bring your left hand down to the floor and bring the left knee down to the floor and open your shoulders looking forward. So shoulders back, looking forward, getting a really deep stretch into the hip. If you wanna go deeper, you can bring the forearms to the floor in lizard pose. And then you can raise the left knee off of the floor. So just however deep you want to go, it doesn't matter. You don't have to do the full pose. But you want to feel a good opening in the hip. You want to feel comfortable, but you want to find your edge. And you're going to bring the left knee to the floor if it's up. And bring the hands back to either side of the right foot. And then bend the left leg and reach behind you with the right foot and see if you can catch your foot. If, you, if this is horrible, just stay in lizard pose. This is a pretty deep opening for the hip flexors and the psoas. Don't forget to breathe. Exhale, hand comes back down to the mat. Step it back to plank through chaturanga. Inhale to upward facing dog, shoulders back. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, raise the left leg up and back. Exhale, left knee to nose. Step the foot between the hands. Right heel comes down at a 45 degree angle. Inhale to warrior one, arms up. Open straight away into warrior two. So front heel in line with midline of the back leg. Looking over your front fingers. Back of the neck is long. Front knee is bending at a 90 degree angle. Keep your breath super deep here. Don't forget about your breathing. Bring your breath all the way up into your collarbones. Draw strength from your breath. Draw strength up through the soles of the feet, all the way up into the top of your head. Feel the whole pose infused with your breath and your strength and your stillness and your grace. 
and then on an exhale, bring the left hand to the inside of the left foot, raise the right arm up towards the ceiling, look towards the palm, and then circle the hand down and around, bring the arm overhead. So right palm facing the floor, gaze on the palm, back of the neck long, deep bend into the left leg. Don't shy away, this is a big opening in the groin. Couple more deep breaths here, feeling the outer edge of the back foot, pressing it into the mat, drawing the navel to the spine on the exhale, filling your lungs with prana on the inhale. And then you're gonna bring the right arm down to the mat and bring your right knee to the floor. So we're going more deeply into the hips, but you're opening at the psoas and the hip flexor. So the shoulders are back and you're looking forward with the back of the neck long. And if you wanna go deeper, you can bring the forearms to the floor. And again, if you wanna go deeper, you raise the right leg off the floor. You can imagine that you have a sandbag on the top of your left knee and a balloon under your right thigh. And then bring the right knee to the floor if you had it raised and bend the right leg and reach behind you with your left hand. See if you can catch the foot. If this is no good, just stay in lizard pose. Keep breathing. And then gently release the foot to the floor. Hands come back to the mat. Step it back to plank. Exhale to chaturanga. Inhale to upper facing dog, shoulders back. And then exhale downward facing dog. Make sure you're not too open in the front of the chest. So draw the rib cage in. Head and neck relaxed. Navel falling to your spine on the exhale. Deep breaths here. This is a resting pose, so take your rest. Sucking up energy through Mother Earth, through your hands and your feet. And then on an exhale, bring your knees to the floor and just come up sitting up straight with your knees bent. Bring your fingertips to the floor behind you and take a very gentle camel pose. Opening the chest, drawing the shoulders back, shoulder blades drawing in towards each other gently gazing towards the ceiling. Nothing too extreme here, just a gentle opening. Filling the chest with air, filling the lungs with prana. Back of the neck is nice and long. Keep the back of the neck long. And then exhale, come forward onto all fours into downward facing dog. Inhale. Exhale, step or jump forward into a forward fold, releasing the head and the neck. Inhale, arms rise, come all the way up to standing. Little back bend if it feels good. And exhale, hands in prayer in front of the heart, mountain pose. Find your stillness. Find your breath. Feel what you feel. And then inhale, arms rise overhead. Exhale, bring the hands in prayer down through the center line as you bend your knees and bring the left elbow to the outside of the right knee so you're twisting in your chair pose. Keep those hips super low. Drop the hips towards the floor, weight into the heels. Opening your chest towards the right. So draw the right shoulder back. Fill the right lung with air. Breathing deeply here. Find your stability. Twists are super cleansing. Keep that breath strong. And you're gonna bring your gaze to the floor and gently lift your left foot and see if you can step it back to the back of your mat, but staying in the twist. So press into the heel, press into the ball of the foot. The foot is left foot is super active. And then if you wanna bind here, you can bind. Uh, you can bring the left hand to the floor and raise the right hand, any variation you like, just staying in the twist, feeling the left side of your abdomen pressing against the inner right thigh, squeezing out your organs, cleansing, purifying, tonifying. Don't lose your breath. And then release the pose, bring the hands to either side of the front foot, and then bring the 
hands to the top of the right thigh or overhead, just going back into that hip flexor stretch. You can bring the hands to cradle the back of the neck. Open the chest, breathing deeply all the way up into the tops of the lungs. And then exhale, hands back down to the mat. Step it back to plank. Chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Take a lovely cleansing breath here. Or two. And then come up onto your tippy toes on an inhale. Exhale, jump or step forward. Look forward, bring your shoulders back. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, come up through chair. And then exhale to stand. You can open your palms either side of your hips and just feel. And then inhale, arms rise. Drop your butt down into a chair again. Keep the hips low. And then exhale, you're going to twist your right elbow to the outside of your left knee. Hands in prayer in front of the sternum. Gaze up towards the ceiling over your left shoulder. Keep the knees in a line. Make sure that your right knee's not pulling back. And see if you can bring your hips a little bit lower. Drop them a little bit lower. Keep that twist strong. Keep your breath strong. And then slowly, slowly looking towards your right foot, you're going to raise the toes off the mat and step the foot towards the back of the mat. So you're staying in your twist, but with a wide stance. So once again, you can raise the gaze over the left shoulder. Keep pressing the abdomen against the inner left thigh, cleansing your inner organs. You can add the bind if you want here. You can bring the right hand to the floor and the left arm up. As long as you feel you're working and you're at your edge. It's not an easy pose. Keep the breath strong. Keep your focus. The deeper, more deeply you breathe, the more prana you get. The more energy you get to, to stay in the pose. The stronger you feel within it. And then exhale to come out, bring the hands to the mat, drop the back knee down and rise up. You can inhale the arms above the head, you can leave the hands on the left thigh, you can bring the hands behind the back of the neck, supporting the neck to open the chest and go a little more deeply into the hip flexor on the right. And then exhale, bring the hands back to the mat, step it back to plank through chaturanga, inhale to upward facing dog. And exhale to downward facing dog. Take a couple of well-deserved resting breaths here. Arms fully active. Pressing in the palms. Pressing especially into the thumb and first finger. Feel that firing up the inner, inner edge of the arm. And then inhale. Exhale, step or jump forward, look forward, bring the shoulders back. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, arms rise all the way up. And then exhale, mountain pose. Take a resting breath. Open your palms, feel what you feel. Gather any parts of you that have gone astray. Gather all your, all your energy up into your core. Maybe you want to say a prayer here for yourself or someone else. And then bring your weight into your left foot. Bend your right knee and catch the right foot behind you with the right hand. You want to catch the inner edge of the right foot. Inhale, bring the left arm above the head. And then exhale, kick the right foot into the right hand and start to tip your weight forward. Fix your gaze, your drishti on one spot, either in front of you or on the floor to help you with the balance. And make sure you're not crunching into your low back. Dancer's pose, Shiva Natha Rajasana. A beautiful back bend, a beautiful stretch for the thigh, also just a beautiful pose. And then to come out, just bring your torso back up, gently release the back foot and come to stand. 
the weight goes into the right foot this time. Bend the left leg, catch the left foot with the left hand, inner edge of the left foot. Inhale, the right arm comes up above the head. And exhale as you tip the weight forward, fixing your gaze to one spot, kicking the back foot into the back hand. No crunching in the low back. Keep the hips parallel to the floor so you're not opening the hip. And tip a little more forward if you want to challenge your balance. Or keep the torso upright if you want to focus on the back bend. And if you fall out like I did, give yourself a pat on the back because you're adorable. And then to release the pose as gently as you can, release the foot and come back to standing. We're going to do toppling tree now. So weight comes into the left foot. Bring your right foot to the inner thigh as high up as you can. This could be below the knee or above the knee, just not on the knee joint. And bring the hands in prayer. Fix your gaze to one spot and inhale, raise the arms up overhead. If you want to challenge yourself, raise the eyes up to the ceiling. And then exhale, bring the right back of the right hand to the right knee. And slowly see if you can tip over to the right. Toppling tree. Use your core strength here to hold the balance. See if you can go a little lower. The hardest part is coming out without falling out. So inhale super slow to bring the torso back up, upright, and then release the foot to the floor. Second side. Inhale, bend the left leg, bring the left sole of the foot to the inner thigh or the inner calf, just not on the joint. Inhale the arms above the head for your tree pose. And then on an exhale, bring the back of the left hand to the left knee and slowly tip over to the left this time, toppling tree. Maintaining your focus, strengthen your core. And when you're ready to come out, on an inhale, start to bring the torso back up and the hand. Hands come together in prayer above the head. Exhale, bring the hands in front of the chest and release the left foot to the floor. Just take a breath here in your mountain pose. And then inhale, arms rise. Exhale, fold forward, come into forward fold. Inhale, look forward, draw the shoulders back, spine long. Exhale, step back to plank, chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. And exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, raise the right leg. Step it between the hands. Back heel comes down, coming up into warrior two on an inhale. And then you're going to bring your back arm around your back and grab your right upper thigh. So reverse your warrior. So the legs don't move here. Just the torso. Breathing up into the collarbones, get a nice opening in the chest here without losing that bend in the front knee. And then on an exhale, come back into warrior two. Inhale, straighten that front leg. And exhale, reach out from the hip, bringing the right hand down to the mat or to your shin uh, or to a block. So for triangle pose, left arm is up above you and you're looking towards the sky. Two arms are a beautiful straight line and your hips are flat here so pull that left hip bone back and feel your weight evenly distributed between both balls of both feet so you're not favoring one leg or the other. And then to come out you're going to bend the front leg and bring the hands to either side of the foot and then bring your right arm underneath your right knee and bring it out to the side. So both arms are going to come out to the side. And if you can, catch them behind the back. So this is kind of a bound lizard pose, going super deep into the right hip. Press into the ball of the left foot and the left heel so that foot is really active. That's going to help you have some stability here. Gaze is forward on the mat in front of you. And then gently release the bind, bring the hands to the floor, bring the left knee down, 
and you're going to straighten your right leg. So draw the toes towards your face. See if you can make a straight line with the ball of your foot. So maybe draw the little toe a little more towards your face if it's, if it's wonky. So this is your splits preparation. So you're opening the hamstring here. So breathe into any tension that you're feeling in the back of that leg. Nice deep breaths. And then you're going to inhale, bending the right leg once again and bringing the torso up and back. You can bring the arms overhead, going deep into the hip flexor, opening the left psoas. And then to go more deeply into your quad, you're going to bend your left knee and catch the foot in your left hand along the left forearm or in the left elbow and inhale the right arm up and above your head. Any pain in the knee, you can double up your mat or put a cushion beneath. No point hurting your knee. Be super kind and lovely to your knee. And breathing here. And then gently releasing the foot, bringing the hands back to the mat, stepping the right foot back to plank, exhaling through chaturanga, inhaling to upward facing dog, and exhaling to downward facing dog. Inhale, raise the left leg. Exhale, step the foot between the hands at the front of the mat. Right heel comes down to the floor. Inhale, up into warrior two. Go low with your hips, low, 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 and breathe. And then you're gonna bring your right arm behind your back and grab the top of your left thigh and open your warrior, breathing up into your collarbones. Exalted warrior, keep that front knee super bent. Such a delicious pose. And then to release, come back into warrior two. Inhale, straighten the front leg. And then exhale, reach forward with your left hand and bring the hand to the floor or to the shin for triangle pose. So both legs are straight. You're pressing into that back edge of the right, that right foot. Right arm is going up to the sky, gaze follows. Breathing deeply here. Breathing all the way from your tailbone into the back of your head. One long line of energy along the spine. Core is strong. And then exhale, you're gonna bring the hands to either side of the foot and get your left shoulder beneath your left knee crease and bring the hands out to either side of the foot a little wider. And then if you wanna take a bind here again, you can bind. So you're, it's lizard bound if you want to, so deeper lizard. Don't forget about that back foot. Press into that back heel, use the ball of the foot. The more active you can make your back foot, the more stability you're gonna have here. And then gently bring the back knee back to the mat and come up with the hands on the left thigh. Bend your right leg and catch your foot behind you with your right hand um, or in the elbow crease and then inhale the left arm up above your head. See how deep you can go into those hip flexors. See if you can surrender a little bit of tension, trust a little bit more than you usually would. And then release, hands to either side of the foot. Inhale to straighten the left leg and Pull your toes towards your face. Get the ball of your foot in a straight line. Keep extending the foot as you breathe here, opening the back of the left leg, the hamstring, the back of the knee, breathing deeply into anywhere that feels tight in your splits preparation. Trust your breath here. See if you can release a little bit more of something. And then to come out, you're gonna exhale as you bend the front knee and step the knee back so you're in all fours. Inhale, come into cat, drop the navel. Exhale, come into cow, push the spine away from the floor through the palms. Inhale, cat, dropping the navel, pulling the shoulders back. Exhale, rounding the upper back, rounding the tailbone for a cow. Okay, now we're gonna come into our splits. So you're gonna step your right foot forward between your hands and then slowly, gently start to straighten both legs. So you're easing yourself down. You can sit on a pillow here. You can use your blocks to support your hands. 
only go as far as feels comfortable. This pose requires a ton of trust and surrender, but also hip flexibility. So if it doesn't feel good to go all the way down, forget it. There's no point hurting yourself. You want to find a point where you can work your edge. And once you find it, you just breathe into it as deeply and with as much presence as you can. And this pose is named after Hanuman, who is the monkey-faced god who was made immortal because he lived his life with such devotion. And to come out, tuck, tuck your back toes under, bring your weight into your hands, press into your hands, and kick your right leg back and up into the sky. And then come back down into downward facing dog. And then inhale, bring the left foot forward between the hands, and we're going to come into splits on the other side. So slowly start to straighten your front leg and your back leg. Keep pulling that right hip forward. So you want to keep your hips parallel with the front of the mat. Again, having a pillow under your butt here or using blocks beneath your hands can be a helpful way to ease into this pose if you're not all the way down to the floor. And if you are all the way down to the floor, the full expression of this pose is inhale and reach your arms above your head in prayer and look up towards your hands and you can feel the beautiful victorious heart opening of this pose. And then slowly, slowly to come out. Put your weight into your hands, press into your palms, lift your left leg, and raise it up and back behind you. And come into Downward Facing Dog. Now turn so that you're on the long edge of your mat. Uh, we're going to do frog pose. So you're going to bring your knees out wide, and then look back and make sure that your ankles are in line with your knees and the inner edge of your edges of your feet are pressed flat against the mat. So just make sure that you're in alignment here. And then you come forward, bringing your weight into your forearms. And this is a really intense pose. So what I want you to play with is bringing the weight forward more into your forearms and then easing off the forearms and pushing back into the hips. And you can find coming forward and backwards like this, working with your breath, you can find an edge that feels comfortable, not painful, maybe a little, a little spicy, but not painful. Find somewhere that you can work with your breath. And then when you inhale, you're imagining opening the tightness in the muscles. And when you exhale, you're imagining all of the tension releasing and flowing out of you through your breath. And just stay with the sensation here. It's really intense. And hold a lot of energy and stress and emotion in the hips. So stay with your breath and stay with the sensation as best as you can. And then slowly coming out, you're going to come forward onto the forearms, bringing all the way into the forearms, and then bringing your knees gently back together, moving as slowly as you need to. And then once you feel ready, just come to the front of your mat into a forward fold. Release your head and neck down. You can grab your opposite elbows with your opposite hands. And have a nice bend in your knees, so no lock in the knees. Shake your head yes and no. Just release into gravity. Let gravity have you. And then inhale, look forward, draw your shoulders back. Exhale, release the head once more. Inhale, bend the knees and roll the spine, bone by bone, all the way up to standing. Inhale, the arms overhead, tiny baby back bend. Exhale, hands in prayer, come to mountain pose. Well done. Inhale, arms rise all the way. Exhale, forward fold, release everything down. Inhale, look forward, draw the shoulders back. And exhale, step it back to plank through chaturanga. Inhale, Upward Facing Dog, and exhale, Downward Facing Dog. Inhale, bring the right knee to the right wrist, left foot to the left hand, Pigeon. We're going to do an upright pigeon, so press with your fingertips into the mat, release the back toes, look up towards the ceiling, and if this feels good, you can stay here. Uh, if you want to go deeper, you can bend the back leg and catch the foot either with the hand or in the elbow crease. And then inhale the right arm up, 
and bend it back to catch the left hand when you make a monkey grip. Breathing up into the collarbones, left hip drawing forward, no crunching in the low back, so tucking the tailbone under. Big puffed up chest like a pigeon. Deep breath here. And then to release, gently release the fingers from the grip and release the foot. And then you're just gonna roll over onto your left buttock so that your right leg stays bent, but you're in a seated position. You're gonna draw the left toes towards your face. So you're flexing the left foot and you're gonna keep your low back super long as you exhale, bending forward and catch either the foot, left foot or the left ankle or the calf. And then breathe here, releasing into gravity. The inhale straightens your spine and the exhale releases you into gravity. Inhale to come up to sitting and you're gonna swing that left leg over so that the left foot is at the outside of the right knee. And then you're gonna inhale the right arm up Exhale, place the right elbow outside the left knee. So you're in a seated twist. You're gonna place the left hand on the floor by your left buttock. And then inhale to extend the spine. And then as you exhale, turn the chin over the left shoulder. Gently, gently. So inhaling straightens the spine and draws you up through the crown of your head. And then the exhale, see if you can look a little further over the left. So you're moving with your breath here, not forcing. Inhale to extend the spine. And exhale to twist a little more deeply. Draw that navel into the spine. So you're twisting from the navel. Feeling that massage of the left thigh against the abdomen as you continue to breathe. And then you're gonna come out on an exhale. So on your next exhale, bring your torso forward. And you're gonna stack your knees over top of each other. So we're coming into cow face pose. Stacking the knees over top of each other, both buttocks equally grounded. And you're gonna inhale the right arm up and bend it back so that your palm is touching the back of your neck. And then you're gonna extend your left arm and bend it underneath and catch catch the two palms behind your back. Or if they don't reach, you can use a belt. Definitely don't force. And if it feels good just sitting up straight like this, if this is enough, you can stay there. Or you can slowly bring your nose towards your knees. And then rest here, letting gravity have you, taking a couple of deep, long breaths. And then inhale to come back up to sitting. Gently, gently release the bind, release your arms. No rush. And then you're gonna undo your legs and come into all fours. Push yourself into a plank and then exhale through a chaturanga, inhaling into upward facing dog and exhaling to a downward facing dog. Then you're gonna inhale and bring your left knee to the left wrist right foot behind the right wrist, pigeon on the other side. Release your back toes. Make sure your back leg is straight. Pressing into the floor or into your left leg, opening the chest and looking up towards the ceiling. Dragging that right hip forward so that the hips are parallel. And you can stay there if that feels good. If you wanna go more deeply, you bend the right leg, catch the foot in the elbow or with the hand and then inhale the left arm up, bend it backwards and catch the right hand behind you. Ekapadaraja Kapatasana, one-legged king pigeon pose. Keep breathing here all the way up into the collarbones. And then to release gently, release the grip, release the back leg, roll over onto your right buttock, keep the left leg bent in towards your groin, Draw the right toes towards the face, flexing the foot. Turn your torso towards the foot, and on an exhale, fold forward over the right leg. Trying to straighten the right leg as much as you can, breathing into the hamstring, and releasing your head towards the ground, letting gravity have you, working with your breath, 
to release as much as you can into the floor. Inhaling into the low back, exhaling the tension out through your breath. And then inhaling to come off and out. You're going to swing that right leg around so that the right foot is at the outside of the left knee. The right hand comes onto the floor behind you next to your buttock and your left elbow goes to the outside of your right knee. Ground down through your seat and on your next inhale feel your spine lengthening all the way from your tailbone all the way up to the crown of your head. And then on your next exhale gently look over the right shoulder. And then inhale, feel the breath drawing all the way up again from the tailbone up into the crown of the head. And exhaling, look over the right shoulder, maybe a little further this time. So you're working with your breath, not forcing, just exploring how much space you can create when you work with the breath. And then you're going to come out on an exhale. So when you exhale, bring your torso around to the front and release the arms. And then stack your knees once again on top of each other. This time the right knee is on top and the left knee is below. And then you're going to inhale, extend the right arm out behind you. Twist the palm to face the back and bring the hand up behind your back. And then inhale again, raise the left arm. Bend the hand back towards the back of your neck and see if you can catch the fingers in a grip. And if not, you can use a belt to make up for the distance. And then either you can stay there, this is pretty intense for the hips, so you can either stay there or on an exhale come forward, bring your nose towards your knees and release into gravity and take lovely deep breaths into the hips, into the shoulders, keeping your breath as full and long as you can, staying as present with the sensations of the pose as you can. releasing so much tension here and then inhale to come out release the grip undo your legs come to the front of your mat into a plank pose on your exhale come through chaturanga inhale into upward facing dog pull the shoulders back exhale downward facing dog and then walking towards the front of your mat, come down into a squat. So you're going to need to widen your stance, bring your toes out and your heels in, bring your hands in prayer in front of the chest, and feel your elbows pressing your thighs open. You can have a block or a blanket underneath the heels if they don't come all the way down. Just breathe deeply here, feeling the massage again of the internal organs with the breath and with the thighs. And you can either stay here, or if you want to take a quick crow pose, bring the weight forward into the hands. Bring the knees as close to the armpits as you can. Raise the butt as high as you can, and see if you can get the toes to float off the floor. If you're still learning your crow, you can just do one foot at a time. If you can get both feet up, curl yourself up into a little ball, shoot your gaze forward, and then on an exhale, drop your feet back into chaturanga inhale into upward facing dog and exhale into downward facing dog and then you're just going to walk your feet forward and come into a seated pose with your legs out straight in front of you and balancing on your tailbone you're going to raise your legs and raise your hands for navasana the boat pose you can do straight legs here if you want uh, it's more challenging with straight legs it's fine to keep them bent you're drawing your navel to your spine, working your core, and all the while making sure that your chest stays open so your heart is open, you're not collapsing in your back. Your back is straight and strong. Just a couple of breaths here. Before we collapse gratefully onto our backs, onto the mat, hug your knees into your chest, roll from side to side, delicious loveliness. And then bring your feet flat to the floor with your knees bent. You want to be able to just graze the backs of your heels with your fingertips in this pose. Feet should be hip width apart. And then you're going to press your low back into the mat really strongly. And on an inhale, slowly curl the bones of the back, bone by bone, up off the mat. 
bringing your chest towards your chin. You can interlace the fingers beneath the back to open the shoulders. Make sure that your shoulders are rolling out when you do this. And breathing into the chest, pressing up through the hip bones. See if you can get a little bit higher, pressing, pressing, pressing up. Keep breathing. And then to come down on an exhale, you're going to go bone by bone. So just like you came up, you're going to roll back down gently, 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 and coming to relaxation. And then you can either repeat this pose, or if you're used to doing full wheel or dvodanurasana, please take your full wheel. You can bring your hands to either side of your ears. And once again, starting with the tailbone pressed into the floor and inhaling, curling the spine up off the floor and coming up into the full wheel. Chest is hugely opening here. Hip points pressing up, reaching for the sky. Your knees are pressing towards each other. And your head is relaxed. No compression in the low back, so keep the low back long. And then gently coming down. When you're ready to come down, you can rock the knees from side to side to release the hips. Just a gentle rocking. Back of the neck long. Press the sacrum into the mat. Beautiful. And we're going to come up in, into another one, but before we do, just place one hand on your low belly and one hand on your heart. It's such a big heart opener, this pose. We just want you to connect with the heart center and connect with the belly. And then when you're ready, come up into your second wheel or just do the low bridge if, if you don't want to push yourself so hard. So second wheel, Urdhva Dhanurasana, your back bend. Remember to keep those knees pointing in towards each other as if you have a block between the knees just to protect your low back. And breathing deeply here, deeply and evenly. And when you're ready to come out, please do so on an exhale, slowly, gently coming back to earth. Pressing the sacrum into the floor. And then bend your right knee, bring your right foot to the top of the left knee, making an, um, an L shape. And then clasp the back of your left thigh and pull the knee towards you. So you can use your right arm to press the right knee away from your face. It'll give you a bit more of an opening in the hips. At the same time, using your left arm to pull the leg towards you. And then releasing and swapping the leg. So bending the left knee this time, left foot to right knee. Clasping the back of the right thigh and pulling the knee towards your face using the left arm to open the left hip. And then to come out on an exhale, release the leg. Make the left leg straight along the mat and hug the right knee in towards your chest. And then you're going to roll over onto your left side, bringing the knee with you. So the right knee comes down to the floor and hold it with your left hand. The right shoulder stays open. And you can look over towards the right. This is the last spinal twist to finish. And then swap sides. So drawing the left knee in towards the chest, hugging it in. And rolling over onto your right side, bringing the knee with you, left knee to the floor. Left shoulder is open, looking over your left shoulder, breathing into the spine. And then you can come lying onto your back. Bring your palms to face the ceiling. Open your toes. Let your toes just fall. Fall out to either side. Draw your chin in a little bit to make sure that the back of the neck is long. Shake your limbs to get out any last little spots of tension. Shake your hips. Take a nice deep inhale into the belly. And exhale with a big sigh. Let it all go. Another one. Inhale into the belly. 
and sigh, release. And then forget about your breath. Just let your breath come naturally. And try to bring your consciousness into the spaces between your thoughts. So instead of focusing on the thoughts as they pass through, focus on the spaces in between the thoughts. And the more you do this, the more you will feel that these spaces begin to grow. And you start to notice that in these spaces there is a bliss. I want you to just go into that bliss as much as you can. Find the peace, the nothingness, the emptiness. And stay there for as long as you like. The longer the better. Namaste.